Welcome to Meet the Movie Press today for August 16th, 2019. We have some Disney drama. There's always some drama at Disney, isn't there? And we have some more news, including Searching 2 and this week's movie reviews. Stay tuned. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. And now... Here's Popcorn Talks, Meet the Movie Press. Welcome to Meet the Movie Press. I am not Simon Thompson, and I do not have a British accent, so therefore that will be missing from this week's episode. Joining me on the panel is Dimitri Panos hey. and Michael hey. Sandoval. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you guys doing today? Oh, just ducky, moderately ducky. All okay. Good. Yeah. Where, where can the the nice people find you? Well, you can find me at Muse TV One on Twitter and Muse TV on Facebook. And uh, on the Twitters, uh, you can find me at DimitriPanos.com, or, or not .com, or just at DimitriPanos. <laughs> and uh, right here on uh, Meet the Movie Press, and also uh, on the Resurrected Anatomy of a Movie. Woohoo! Woohoo! Yeah. So you can find me, of course, I am Scott Menzel. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at the other Scott M, or over at WeLiveEntertainment.com. Uh, I normally don't do a lot of promotion on this show for We Live Entertainment, but this week I posted so many damn interviews i want you to go check them out right now it's um, a great website yeah it thank really you is. uh so guys uh movie news this week mm-hmm. i feel like it wasn't as uh as much as usual uh, maybe it's because we're in the middle of the end of summer the middle end of summer um but uh the big news yesterday that came out was of course there's going to be a searching two what do you guys think about this i like the original movie I don't know. I think there's a lot of places you could take it for a second film. Uh, I'm curious to see what they're going to do with it and what they're going to do with John Cho's character. He's not in it. He's not going to be in it. He is not in it. None of the original cast is coming back. Well, then that's a different story then. It's going to be a 47 meters down uncaged version of searching where it's not mm-hmm. going to have anything to do with the first film i think well in that case check me out because <laughs> i like john i like john cho's character in the first one i think he carried the film very well and really pulled you into what the situation is which which is something that's going on in this very day yeah when you start taking out main actors and main characters and changing it up a little bit i don't know i really don't know what it'd be like I mean, I was a, I'm a really big fan of searching, uh, and you're right about John Cho, but I thought the concept was pulled off really, really well. Um, so, I just I'd be curious to know what they do for the second one. I don't necessarily mind a sequel, like if it's going to be a different movie, uh, much like Forty Seven Meters Down. Um, to me, it re- you know, it really is about how it's executed. Mm-hmm. And the way that the first searching was done, I really didn't think it was going to keep my attention at all. But it really worked between the filming, the editing, and, of course, John Cho's super performance. Uh, he did carry this uh, on his shoulders. So uh, I-, I would just be curious to, to see how and which way they go. Um, you know, we have seen other... Um, uh, sequels, horror sequels, uh, like Ouija is a really good one, which didn't have that original cast. Um, you know, a lot of the Annabelle movies, uh, you know, they go with a different cast, different mm-hmm. story. So I'm good with that. Just I'm just curious to see what they do this time and how they're going to drag me in. Yeah, I mean, I'm really curious about it, too, um, <clears throat> mainly because I was such a big fan of the first film. I, I remember seeing it at Sundance, and I was like, and they didn't even have it in a big theater when it premiered at Sundance. It was one of the smaller venues. And to kind of see that kind of reaction, I think it went on to be one of the biggest Sundance releases or performers last year in, in theaters. And um, Anesh is like really, um, you know, did, did, did something pretty marvelous with that film and the way that he used technology on such a small budget. Because I think the movie only had like a five or six million dollar budget initially. Now that Sony's going to back it and it's going to have a bigger budget, I'm curious how much they can advance this story using different types of technology and maybe even adapt some more newer technology into it. And I'm looking forward to that. And if I may, I want to add like 
my thing would be not to go overboard on the budget. Like yeah. if it was five, go eight to ten. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. the the best of the creativity came from that limited budget, and but they crafted, in my opinion, a really well done noir mystery. So, searching's a mystery to me. You have this undercurrent of evil. Like where is she? There was there was good guys, bad guys. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping that they can draft a great story and script and come up with another really good mystery and then bring me in with with the technology. Because it wasn't just... It worked on so many levels. It wasn't just that we're watching, searching via monitors, cell phones. and It was a really good story that had me guessing... Uh, that's what drew me in. And then after a while, I kind of, I was so used to watching it the way they filmed it and the editing was brilliant that that's what made it for me. And John Cho and everybody hitting their, it was just perfectly executed. When that movie, it was a sleeper hit and it, it could have failed on so many different levels. So I hope they, I hope they're going with the same fortitude and creativity and and good storytelling. Yeah, I hope so too. I mean, I'm looking forward to it. Um, it's it's kind of interesting because um, right now, I think with the news of this coming out, this becomes more of a industry story. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think that this is something um, that mainstream audiences are really going to be discussing that much right now Uh, it'll be very interesting to see what happens when the movie is actually released and if people go back to the theaters to see it um i don't know if you guys feel this way but this is just something that i've i've i noticed and i'm this is actually part of a segue that i'm going to do is uh the past couple weeks everyone's been talking about this little women's movie little women right. little women little women everyone you know in in on film twitter is just like oh my god when is this trailer going to drop and i feel like we as critics are are very much excited to see this movie but i don't know how much regular audiences care all that much when there's multiple versions of this already existing and the only thing that's drawing us into it is because of the wonderful cast and of course Greta Gerwig returning behind the camera. What did you guys think of that trailer? I thought it was a great trailer. It looked very it was shot very well for what what I'm going to be looking at in the future. But once again, it's like what you said, there's so many versions of this film and in today's audiences, will they come out and watch and support a film like this? I mean, we already know they're not reading the book. So, <laughs> so let's put it that way. Yes. But are they going to come out and watch it? It has a great cast. I mean, Emma Watson already, I, when I saw her, I was like, oh, wow, she's a, it's, it's great seeing her on screen as a different role and seeing something like from that from her. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to come out. Yeah. It's hard to tell. I was the only one that thought the trailer, meh. Really? I, meh. It was okay. It wasn't. It didn't blow me away like it. Like I knew there was a lot of talk about it. Yeah. But we're gonna talk about another trailer that grabbed <laughs> my attention far more. Yeah. Than this one. And 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 again, part of it. Look, Shorsha Ronan is fantastic. Emma, Emma Watson, fantastic. You have a great cast. A very capable uh, director. Uh, it it just didn't look. I don't know. It was. I don't understand why they didn't try to make it. Uh, like make it today, make the Little Women today with today's issues and yeah. problems. But I, wh- whatever, what do I know? Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it'll do well. But I, I don't think know. I was one of the only ones that looked at it and said, eh, "It looks okay." I don't know. I mean, honestly, I know like people love. You know, one of the things that everyone flaunts over with this movie, oh, Timothy Chalamet, oh my mm-hmm. God, he's in it again. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, the guy does not really have a box office draw. He really doesn't. But like, God, the people in our industry, man, they like, they fall over like this, like he's the, the next, the second coming of Christ or something. I don't understand. Emma Watson has a box office, but she yes. seems to be more of a support. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I just. Yeah. I mean, this movie, I mean, looking at it from the trailer perspective, and, and it's kind of interesting that you had a, a meh feeling towards it, because essentially, I had a meh feeling going into watching the trailer, because I'm like, why do we need this? Mm-hmm. And then I watched the trailer, and I was kind of like, you know what? It looks pretty good. But like, 
you know, the way that our, our the people in our industry talk up stuff, but it I just, it just words, tries. Though, yeah. Yeah. You're crushed it. Yeah. Quote, unquote. I, I, I read the tweets. <laughs> yeah. I read tweets. I yeah. do. But you're right. There was a lot of, like, talk about this trailer that it... When I saw another trailer, I had to tweet out, there's a lot of talk about this trailer, but this is the trailer that actually emotionally pulled me in. So, yeah, I mean, I'll see Little Women. Um, I'll give it its fair shake. But for a trailer, for me, it was okay. Yeah. And, and and to me, and I don't know if, if people are having problems with this, but um, Shorsha Ronan, of yeah. course, like... Perfect fit for this. It's nothing that we haven't seen her do before. Correct. So, like, you watch her in it, and you're kind of like, of course, that seems right. right. And then, in a weird way, Emma kind of feels right, too. But right. then when Timothy comes on there, I'm kind of like, you seem like you should be in a different movie. movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is it the part where he's jumping up and down on the porch yeah, yeah, where I'm kind of yeah. like, I don't know about... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 very it's very bizarre. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I I'm I'm intrigued by it. I don't know how I'm going to feel about it as a whole. Uh, film nerd Jamie said she was underwhelmed by Little Women and Love Lady Bird. You know, it's mm-hmm. too early to really tell mm-hmm. if I'm going to be underwhelmed by Little Women. Mm-hmm. I just think the trailer was good, but not as amazing. Yeah. Um, Zeno Hour had no interest in Little Women. Never cared about the book. It's not for me. <laughs> yeah. That's how you know that that, that that's mm-hmm. you know. Look, the movie's gonna end up doing what it ends up doing, right? And yeah. you're right about like I'd like to see Shirley Sh- Ronan do some other <laughs> roles. <laughs> yeah. However, she did attempt to be in a commercial film that flopped. So you stick with what you're really good at and mm-hmm. what what gets you great attention. She she's a fantastic actress. She's fantastic. I still think she hasn't. To me, Brooklyn. Oh yeah, Brooklyn. Brooklyn was one of the. Uh, it was a great movie. Great actors. She was fantastic, and that's where for me she shined. Lady Bird um, was to me was okay, but it doesn't take away. She is a magnificent actress. Yeah. I think, especially for her age. Um, she, she yeah, she nails it. So. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna get to the other trailer you want to talk about in yes. just a few yeah. seconds. But, you know, it's funny because uh, I noticed that in the chat, you know, people brought up a piece of news that they want to talk about. So we're going to talk right about that. And that, of course, is Neil Blomkamp moving on from RoboCop Returns. He is not going to be it doing this movie. What a surprise. I am shocked. I am shocked. I know. I mean... (laughs) My first question is, do we really need another RoboCop? That's always the question, isn't it, at this because point? after the last one, I think you don't. <laughs> which, yeah. I, which, I gotta be honest, I didn't hate the last one mm. as much as a ton of other people. Look, I just... I Neil Blomkamp, to me, look, seems like a nice guy. He was <laughs> a, he's an overblown director. He had District 9, which, I, again, I did not fawn over as much as a lot of other people. And after that, it just went downhill. Um, his that last movie, Crappy? I, I mean, oh, Chappy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was awful. I mean... That was a you know, that was awful. It was awful. Really then he was going to do an did... alien movie. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. Now this is the second... <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. I think that movie, which one, pr- pr- uh, Chappie, yeah, <laughs> might have had the worst Hugh Jackman performance ever in it, mm-hmm. with that freaking like wig too that he was wearing. Like, what is this garbage? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I agree with you on Neil Blomkamp. I think you know his first two movies, I liked them, and then I just started seeing this downward shift, and then he started just becoming the name that everyone would attach to a sci-fi project, right? And then he would like sign on and then drop off and sign on and drop off and it's like dude like you're not that well known like go ahead and just do it because what does it matter you had two okay movies and one that like pretty much most people would agree is shit so like do something else and see what you can do right do you think it's something with the industry though too because like the first two were so they were okay and yeah and then all of a sudden like they give them more of a budget and it just falls apart. I think this kind of falls into something what what I feel is 
is that with the first movie especially District 9 I felt like that was very much him right like that was something that he was personal you know, that was somewhat personal to him and he wanted <coughs> to create it and then I felt like the other two movies um, Elysium was the second one mm-hmm. where I felt like they started becoming a little bit more commercial and then maybe and, and we never know this anymore because I feel like I've talked to so many directors and producers and stuff like that where the studios either said they're really hands off or they're really like in control of everything and I don't you never know now where the fault yeah. lies mm-hmm. you know it, it's just very weird yeah. and with him it just seems like the industry just immediately backed him yeah like since District 9 and they're the ones who pushed and got him in. And then I remember all this talk about his alien movie. Oh, oh and yeah. Sigourney mm-hmm. Weaver and all this talk mm-hmm. and all this talk. And then that was bye-bye. Now, I read something that film nerd uh, Jamie had written about um, what he presented may have been too political and expensive for MGM's liking. Now, oh. this is, I mean, oh, okay. I can't yeah, speak yeah, yeah. about the political thing, but another you know, some other news that I think was discussed last week. Right. But MGM kind of falls under, well, not kind of, they fall <laughs> under Annapurna. Yeah. So, to your point, Vilner Jamie, budget at this point for them, they're in the process of, like, they're this close to filing a Chapter 11. So, that means they ain't paying bills. That means they ain't got budgets. So, if Robocop returns could be put on a back burner like they could have said hey you know what until all this dust settles till we figure out what's going on we 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 are, we still want to do it but we can't do it as maybe as soon and that could have been why he said i'm not sticking around we don't know that backstory all i all i know is what i know is that mgm falls under annapurna Financially, they ain't stable. So I think a lot of things are in play because of this whole Annapurna thing. And until what I believe is going to happen, Daddy Ellison is going to come in, there's going to be some changes. And I suspect that they will happen not too long after uh, Where'd You Go, Bernadette. Because I think that's their last one of yeah. them. I don't think they have anything for the holidays. So, And obviously they can't go to TIFF and go shopping. Because yeah, they don't have a budget, and plus, if they did have a budget at this point, they should be putting that money behind Booksmart for right. an awards campaign. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. So, so yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, a lot of uh, conversation about this. Uh, Zeno Hour District Nine was amazing. Elysium was solid. Chappie wasn't good, but not as bad as some believe. Needed to rewrite. Needed to needed to another rewrite to streamline the narrative. Maybe they're going to give him full control over RoboCop. I don't think so. Uh, Zeno Hour also saying that uh, uh, I'll keep saying this until it happens. RoboCop versus Terminator. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. I mean, talk about a way to reboot both franchises. The Dark yeah. Horse, Co- Dark Horse Comics may have done that. Already yeah, yeah. Too. yeah. So, and I do agree, uh, uh, Cammy. Uh, Joel Kinnaman's uh, RoboCop was awful. Yes, it was bad. It was definitely bad. Um, going back to the trailers that we were t- going to talk about, the one that Dimitri is hinting upon is a a film by Mr. Paul Fegg, and that, of course, is Last Christmas. Go ahead, yeah. Dimitri, take the lead. No, this is like this trailer. I saw this shortly after, pretty much, I think, the same day, or yeah. maybe it was the day after um, Little Women, and that trailer pulled me in. Um, and I was like, okay, this looks like a, this looks like a Christmas movie we, we sort of need. Yeah. There hasn't been a good one. There hasn't been a good romantic Christmas movie. And I was, I was, I was, I was all in. It looked like it hits. It looked like it hit all those Christmas Carol bells and notes. Uh, and my only concern is, since they do mention it more than once in the trailer, that um, Amelia Clark's character was sick. Um, I I just I don't want it to be a downer. I don't think it will be, but I do, I don't want a downer yeah. um, for Christmas. But we don't know what the whole story is. But I love the chemistry between Golden and and Clark seems really good. To me, that trailer drew me in where Little Women did not, and I was all on board. Liked yeah, it a yeah. lot. Yeah. I saw it. At, I saw a special preview of it at uh, CinemaCon, mm-hmm. like a little pre before the trailer, because you know how CinemaCon yeah. show you 
clips to the theater owners and I saw it and I was just like this is a in different film it really pulled me in over there this trailer which is a little different I'm just like this is going to be I think it's going to be a big hit for for them because I think it's going to pull a lot of people a lot of date movies you have we really don't have that many date movies no. anymore and something like this is a date movie especially during Christmas time it's going to really do something that we haven't seen in a long time yeah yeah, it, it's interesting you pointed out the date movie thing. I feel like Netflix has really mm-hmm. taken that over. Yeah. You know, they have become mm-hmm. the go-to now for romantic comedies mm-hmm. because studios just won't back them yeah. anymore. Yeah. Um, I get the same vibes both of you guys do. I, I think this is going to be a big hit. Um I don't know if Amelia Clark would be able to sell this movie on her own, but I think with Paul Fig and Henry Golding behind it, mm-hmm. I think those two have enough power in this industry. And, I mean, it's it's a credit to Henry Golding because, you know, he really did, like, one big movie. And, like, everyone now is, like, falling all over him. Mm-hmm. Right. So, um, and I think that, that... Our friends, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think... Uh, it has this potential of becoming a cult classic almost in the same vein as like something like a love actually. Yeah. yeah. I just I just see this doing really, really well. And um there hasn't been anything like it for a number of years. Yeah. No, and, and and the Christmas movie, much like the comedy, seems to be a dying breed. Like nobody can make a good Christmas movie. Like there really hasn't been a very good Christmas movie since like what, Elf? Yeah. <laughs> um yeah. So this one just hit all the beats, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Even though I'll probably see it alone. Yeah. But in any case, um, <laughs> you know, just being honest, um, it just it really uh, looked it looked good. Yeah, it looked good, and, and we need that kind of a movie too. I agree. Really too. I agree. Henry and Amelia look like it's just like a good pairing. Yes. When I yeah. saw it. The cinema conversion of this trailer, it looks like a good pairing. And it just kind of pulls you in on a Mac. You believe that relationship is real. And and can we also, like, Paul Feig, I like how he is doing different genres. Oh, now. yeah. Like, I like, look, he's, we know he's a great comedic director and, and, and he can choreograph and, and mm-hmm. cast, mm-hmm. put together a great cast, right? But then when uh, Simple Favor is completely against what he, what we knew him to be as a director, mm-hmm. and I loved that movie, also starring Golding as well. Yeah. But it was a really great, it's an excellent movie. It's yeah. a wicked little movie. So I like that he's doing this talk because not only will it have romance, but it's going to have some comedy too. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have to be the rated R comedy like in A Bridesmaids, uh, which had some romance in it, but it's going to be a good, it's, I think. Just think it's gonna be really. I'm cool. also happy that maybe Emma Thompson will get some love for this movie, yeah. considering the fact she yes. wrote the screenplay and got zero love for Late Night. Yeah. Right. Just saying. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Hundred percent. So, so yeah. Uh, now we're gonna go into our our, our Disney drama for the week. <laughs> Uh, there is some big drama over at Disney, as there is every week. Uh, the first drama story right now is that... Yeah! Disney drama! Uh, Harry Styles is not Prince Eric. How? Oh, oh, my God. Oh. Crushing everyone's heart this week. Oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> no, how could he? How could he? Um, I just... What you, happened? I, 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 what happened? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what happened? And um, what happened? What do you guys I think? Uh, this, you can take this one. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 what happened? He, personally, when he got hired, I'm like, perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh, perfect. He's a perfect, like, Prince Charming character. I just want to know, like, where, where, where did he go? Wait a minute. Wait, I, I signed what? No. It was like, get me out of it. But I don't understand. I, I would really love to know why he exited. I mean, because that was a quick turnaround. Mm-hmm. Like, to yeah, say that was yeah. a revolving door. Like, that was a revolving door, like, Superman went through and he just got shot at. <laughs> like... Was he ask, was he asking for too much or was he asking for final cut? Yeah, I don't know. Like, to write know. his own song. I mean, you had everything <laughs> in him. That's like, right. So I, I hey, I hope they can find somebody 
as charming. Who do you think? Uh, don't ask. I me have no idea. I have no, I have idea. no idea. idea. What do you do with this? Ans- I, I, Ansel Egger. <laughs> I mean, I don't. Miles Teller just dropped in there. Teller, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I honestly don't know. <laughs> he was the full package for that because he even had the looks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, the movie's going to do what that, what Little Mermaid is going to do as a live action, which is probably pretty damn good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it wouldn't have hurt his career. Oh. There so, was a burn in the chat. Film there was nerd burn? Jamie said he found out Rob Marshall was directing. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I know. I feel that way too, Jamie. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. Is that true? <laughs> That's not true. true. I know. No. No. Uh, we can always start the rumor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? Everybody else does it nowadays, right? Yeah, exactly. Get the headlines ready, guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we'll see what I really don't know. Mean. Maybe maybe this is a, a smart <laughs> decision. <laughs> Kerry <Kevin> was like, <laughs> give me some tissues. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, oh. Je- Jenna James has some has some names for us. Okay, we have Dylan O'Brien, Tyler Posey, uh, Dice Montgomery, Trevor Jackson, uh, J- uh, Mike Wills? Sorry. Wilds, sorry, Mike Wilds, K- KJ Appa, Brendan Twats and uh, <laughs> Twats. Yeah, yeah, it's not. It's not twaits. Twaits. That's Twaits. 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 twaits, twaits, twaits. He, could, he could join Brian. This is a family <laughs> film. Yeah, this is a completely yeah. different movie. Oh my movie. god, what do you get? <laughs> he could join Brian Tree Henry. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Throw back to that. Throw back yeah. to that if everyone remembers. Barry Manilow for Prince Eric. Yes. There you go. There you go. Yeah, a lot of people. <laughs> lot of I, people. I don't know. I don't. You know, in my opinion, they should go for an unknown. At this point, yeah. yeah at this point, that'd be a good idea. I mean, here, again, just going back to st- like when I saw Dunkirk, um, Dunkirk, with the masses. There were there were like a <laughs> bunch of girls there because of him. I remember looking around the audience, going, "What the? Like, wow, who knew that this was like this could be like a date night? Like, I just I, why?" And then somebody said, "Oh, Harry Styles is in this," and I was yeah. like, "Who?" It was like when he's. One Direction. I was like, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. But they were there to support in Dunkirk. Imagine what they would have done for Little Mermaid. And I mean, that fan base. Like, exactly. Yeah, he didn't even sing in Dunkirk. So <laughs> if he can get a female audience. The world is crumbling around me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> shot. Yeah. If, People are dying here. And I have to <laughs> swim. <laughs> If he can get a female audience to a Christopher Nolan, yeah, get to, mm-hmm. like that to me spoke volumes for someone at the time I really was unfamiliar with. Uh, and then I started reading uh, interviews with him, like, whether it be Rolling Stone or, and whatnot. And I was like, oh, okay, I get it. Uh, so when they cast him, perfect. Now, not so perfect. Yeah. So I would love to be in that meeting and just see what happened. Oh, me, me too. too. Me too. Be a fly on the wall. Me too. I'm sure he's too young, but I'd like to see Asher Angel play him, who was young Shazam. Um, he might be. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. Turn, you know he's eight. He's 17. So like by the time they're shooting, he'd be 18. And mm-hmm. I think like Little Mermaid's always been a very youthful story. So I don't know. He's an up and comer, and I could see him selling tickets. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a good. That's, that's a, a good, good pick. pick. Yeah. Someone said Tom Holland. <laughs> Tom Holland. <laughs> Why not? Why not? He's in Why everything not? else. He's in everything, everything else, else, Disney. Exactly. All right. <laughs> Speaking of more Disney drama, they're not happy with New Mutants. Whoa! What? <laughs> what? I am really? so shocked. I am shocked, too. <laughs> but you know what they should do, right? Mm-hmm. They should pour some more money into it and send yes. it back for reshoots, what they're doing, instead of just dumping it on Disney+. Plus, right? No, but exactly. you know what? It's so bad that they don't even want to put it on Disney+. Plus. Yeah. Right, but no. they'd rather go put more money into it and it still not get good reviews, mm-hmm. and then they can complain, like they mm-hmm. did last week, that Dark Phoenix wasn't good and that we're going to have to cancel a lot of these movies because, hey, we don't want to waste the money. Mm-hmm. Well, like if Dark Phoenix would have made a lot of money, yeah, what would we be talking about this today? No, no, exactly, no, no. exactly. No, and 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 it's a very interesting. Here, here's what bugs me about that whole Disney thing. Yeah, number one, um, there was a fantastic article in the Hollywood Reporter, I believe, about this whole thing, where one executive said, "I have never seen a public hanging yeah. like this, and neither have I." Yeah. Right, and I really thought that it was unfair because you can't tell me that Disney. Who, who paid a bunch of money for Fox <laughs> didn't know the product that they were acquiring. Yes. They didn't, like, it, Iger included. 
I am willing to bet that they set up special screenings for them to see the movies, the likes of Dark Phoenix and, and Racing in the Rain. And, and, and Stuba. And, and don't Stuber. forget about Stuba. Yeah, and Stuba. <laughs> um, so they knew. So you can't tell me they didn't know the product that they had. And then for them to complain about it, it's like, you bought it. You like. Yeah. Hey, you morons, you bought it. Like, you <laughs> saw this before the public did. Like, you saw this, like, once you started, like, preparing to say, we want to buy you. But before we buy, like, no studio would ever go in so blind and say, we don't know what movies they have. They knew that these movies were crap. They just didn't realize how bad they were going to perform at the box office, perhaps, mm-hmm. except for Breakthrough. Uh, uh, which was directed by Roxanne Dawson, who was Belana Torres on Star Trek Voyager, and that was the one that's made, <laughs> and it's a faith-based movie, mm-hmm. and it was the one movie that they couldn't say tanked. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you know, I talked about this last week, but the thing that's mind-boggling to me is when you know you have a bad film and you have all the resources that you have available that Disney has now in the future... Mm-hmm. Why not just put it to Disney Plus? They could have pulled. I mean, we were talking about how they should have put Dark Phoenix on Disney Plus before it even came out. Like they could have pulled it. They didn't have to put the marketing budget behind it. Stuber, they tested it at South by Southwest, and this is like this is the biggest like bog- mind boggling thing to me. It did not go over that well at South by, and if it does not go over that well at a film festival. It therefore means that the movie's not that good because film festival audiences eat everything up. It could be the worst Mm -hmm. piece of shit and people will still be like, oh, that was good. So why did they decide to put all the money? I mean, they had a huge marketing budget for Stuber. Made no sense. Made no sense. Another movie they could have dumped. And and I say to you that it did make sense because you got Batista, you got... um, um, I forget his name. Who, who did Kumail. he cast? Kamal. Yeah, Kamal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Both relatively hot in their careers, trying to resurrect this. Like, now, see, when you started South by, I mean, I had heard you were the first negative that I had heard about the movie. Other people had said that that was really funny. So it could have gone either way. I understand. You're not going to dump a movie like Dark Phoenix on a Disney Plus after you've spent so much money uh, producing it. And getting it ready, and it's going to be a theatrical. That doesn't look good. And I at least look. We didn't. I didn't like the movies. The two movies we're talking about. But it doesn't mean just because they're not good movies doesn't mean they don't deserve their fair shake theatrically. Yeah. I know that mm-hmm. there is an outlet now. Um, you know, but we still have to have theatrical movies and regardless of what we think of like a dark phoenix it still looked like a theatrical movie not every movie we see in the theater or on netflix or on disney plus is going to be good no anyways no. so that's just the nature of art yeah so i'm glad you go theatrical you don't dump it um but nobody came in to make a deal like netflix uh to spend like buy it to put it on Netflix, much like they did with that Cloverfield movie, yeah. much like they did with Mowgli. Uh, so that synergy, I don't mind so much if a if a studio doesn't know how to handle a flick. But in this case, these were theatrical release movies. New Mutants has had problems since day one. Mm-hmm. Okay, and the mere fact that Disney doesn't know what to do with it. You know, I won't be surprised if it ends up on Disney Plus. But after you've spent so much money, like you can just do the Disney dump and put it out there, and then it goes to Disney Plus. Yeah. And my thing is, where was the business plan in this whole acquisition process? It's this has been some time already. Right. Even when New Mutants had some public screenings, and you heard how bad it was, it was it was the people who got special screens. From what I've talked to, they didn't like it at all. Right. And Disney knew this ahead of time. Disney knew this on the acquisition. acquisition. They knew what they were getting into. They knew the films that were coming out. There should have been a plan. It sounds like there's no plan in place. And if there was a plan, they abandoned it right after the third quarter because it just doesn't make any sense. New Mutants should should be on Disney Plus. At least save it. 
if you want a theatrical run, maybe do like what Netflix does, like a two week run, three week run in the won't, theater. They won't do that um, just to stay nicey nice mm-hmm. with exhibitors, no. okay? So, but they will. I mean, you can end up releasing it, but just do it in a do it in a dump. Do it in August, September. Doing it, do it in February. Disney does know how to cut a trailer, mm-hmm. so they have great people behind them on that. But yeah, you were just saying everything. Like they knew what they had. They knew Fox's slate coming up, mm-hmm. and a lot of these movies, including movies like Ad Astra, yeah. which they're pouring wow. some mm-hmm. money. Two right now because that was a Fox movie. Um, the bottom line is Fox this year, if there were no acquisition, wouldn't be having a very good year. But I hate to prove it. I hate to tell you, unless you're Disney, from a studio side, everything's cyclical. Yeah. Universal mm-hmm. was exactly. down in the dumps, but they've mm-hmm. come back up. Paramount and Sony, we're now seeing a renaissance. Mm-hmm. They 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 are they're reemerging uh, as well. So. You have stinky movies every now and then, but then again, you know, you hit a flow and you it's, start releasing. It's hits. amazing. I mean, Jenna James is like naming <clears throat> off all these titles. I mean, I didn't even realize all these titles were like in e- even in development. But like she said, Mega Man. There was a, oh, yeah. a yeah. Monopoly crime movie, mm-hmm. Magic the Gathering, the Three Misfortunes of Geppetto, uh, and then there was none. Forty mm-hmm. Thieves. Jesus, Toy, Toy oh. Mageddon, The Heat 2, which I think, like, why would they stop that? Yeah. The uh, Commando, The Case Against Aid, Understand, Hitman 2, Echo. Yeah, that, I mean, that news came yeah. out, I'm pretty sure, earlier this week. Was it? It, it, it was mm-hmm. during the public hanging, because basically Iger and company said, you know what? They, they pretty much said an edict to the Fox people mm-hmm. going, you got to do better than this, or whatever. Like, they were really pissed at the people when they should have just been pissed at themselves. Like, they knew what they had. Oh, and they were exactly. really, I felt bad for those Fox people because, A, they didn't think that they could be potentially losing their jobs because they didn't realize, like, this acquisition was going to, this unprecedented acquisition that hasn't happened in the history of this town. And then he's yelling at them. And it's like, but you knew what you were buying, buddy. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, I get it. These movies aren't Disney, quote unquote. But again, this is why I was against this move to begin with. Yeah. Because there goes your variety, folks. Yeah. I'm not saying that any one of those movies uh, that that Jenna mentioned would be hits, right? Mm-hmm. Right. But they would be other movies to go see outside of Marvel, yeah. Star Wars, Pixar, and Disney animated, mm-hmm. right? Right. So mm-hmm. we've lost. That's crazy. All those movies. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's mean, like Ford versus Ferrari when it comes out later right. on this year. It's like, you Fox know, it's, Light. Yeah, you know it's not going to be like a big money maker, but you know it's going to be a good film. What do they do? What's the, mm-hmm. when they win some awards, because I'm already saying that I wouldn't be shocked if it yeah. wins something. What does Disney change their tune with when they get an award? Well, because of well these but that's why they, that's why they kept yeah. Fox Searchlight, mm-hmm. because this is their... Miramax yeah. again. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's that's basically what it is. Yeah, but but no. But I was just going to say the last piece of Disney drama that I had today was this whole thing that came out about Jojo Rabbit, where they're mm-hmm. basically saying right. that it might be too edgy and you know it might push the boundaries too far for the Disney label, mm-hmm. you know. And I think that's that's freaking messed up because totally. they're. They signed on, as this conversation, as both of you have pointed out, they signed on to have a wide range of movies where they know that they're going to have some movies that are going to be R. They're going to, they picked up Fox Searchlight, for Christ's sake. They released 12 Years a Slave and like movies that have really yeah. touchy subject matter. And resonate. Yeah. So and that's why because Disney forgot how to release those movies. You know, they, they everybody, look, in the 80s, uh, we had Touchstone. Yeah. Uh, then we had Hollywood mm-hmm. Pictures. So Disney was releasing rated R movies. Everything from Pretty Woman to Outrageous Fortune to Stakeout. Down and out in Beverly Down Hills. Down and out in Beverly Hills, right? Mm-hmm. They knew how to do that. They could release a smaller picture. Then with the acquisition of Miramax, right? Miramax was their go-to awards kind of a movie. If things got too hot, like a Fahrenheit 9-11, then they would go to, I was, they would go to Lionsgate, make a distribution deal. Lionsgate will take the heat on this. 
So, but then when they dumped Miramax, it was all done. And then when they started being this conglomerate, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, Disney Animated, they forgot how to release. Because there is there is a, a, some sort of a finesse when you release a smaller kind of a movie. Yeah. They don't know how to do that anymore. Yeah. But they don't care either mm-hmm. to an extent. Unless, I think, to your point, if Ford vs. Ferrari mm-hmm. starts gaining some, some, some nominations... It's like, ooh. That is yeah. actually, just ooh. so you know, Dimitri, that and Ad Astra are Fox titles. Right. Um, searchlight titles are um, Lucy, in the, Lucy in the Sky, Jojo Rabbit, and then the Terex, uh, Ter- Terrence Malick movie, The Hidden Life. Mm-hmm. Those are the three Fox Searchlight movies. Great. And so Good. Jojo Rabbit, they should be releasing. They should let Fox Searchlight do what Fox Searchlight does best. Right, right. which is why, That's I mean, you they've been it. there for 25 years for a reason, guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Exactly. And, yeah. I, and when you see it, it's like, why not have an edgy film once in a while? Because it's in the, Disney. It, exactly. But in the 80s, you used to see this all the time. You did. And, and, you did. and it was something like, even when, like, Trading Places, I was a kid, and my mom would take me and would explain about what the movies are. I don't see that anymore. I don't no. see I don't see parents being safe. parents and being too too safe taking their kids to movies. Or they want to take their kids to a movie that isn't they shouldn't be taking them to. But in the like when we were growing up, we saw these type of movies yes. and we explained about them and go through it. That's why I say Jojo Rabbit should be released. I don't. It should be something that I, I'm actually be. really worried about that movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know like people are like, well, they have that contract for with him for the right. Thor movie, but mm-hmm. I'm still worried about like when they play it at TIFF. And like, if people say like it's really edgy, mm-hmm. right. that I'm afraid that they might go back yeah. in and cut some things, mm-hmm. take some things out. I yeah, just, I mean, I saw a poster for it last night at the AMC Century City. Yeah, um, yeah, I would be, I would be very disheartened um, because, to your point, you're right. Uh, we want edge. We want more variety. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not just saying this as a review. I'm saying it as a fan of movies. Mm-hmm. That's. It, it, Going back to my earlier point, that's why this whole acquisition bothered me, because it really does limit. Now it takes more away from from movie-going audiences than it gives. And that's why I I do whatever I can to champion the Neons, the Entertainment Studios, the A24s. We need need that edgy product. Um, And now we just need people to go. Go, mm-hmm. go to the movies. There are more movies out there than Marvel uh, and the Pixar's and the Disney. Mm-hmm. There's a fine variety. We had a great discussion at breakfast about this. So, But people have to go to support this and pay their dollars. Yeah. You know, It's still going to be cheaper. I know football season is around the corner. Going to the movies is still cheaper than going to a football game. Yes, it is. Wow. Quick question before you guys move on. Yeah. The thing I'm a little confused here is... Uh, when's- Sorry, folks. <laughs> no worries. Having a little tech difficulties, guys. Yes. I'm going to mute your mic and then sure. have you unplug it and just replug it back in. Okay. Um, so for for like suburban Midwestern families who wouldn't be going who wouldn't be going to see Jojo Rabbit anyway, is there that much brand loyalty and recognition that you know 20th is a Disney brand? Is it that much of a threat to Disney's huge corporate image if they release like an indie like Jojo Rabbit? That's what I'm confused about. I, I am very confused by that too because mm-hmm. I feel like that's not the case at all. I feel yeah. like they're they're making it that, that they're marketing that way just in case it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And, and it's I very agree. strange to me because they're not even putting the Disney logo on that film. It's still going to have the Fox Searchlight mm-hmm. logo on it. So people will most people outside of the industry are not going to connect the dots with that. Exactly. No, exactly. Not at all. Anyone mm-hmm. who has a huge brand loyalty to Disney is probably an incredibly <laughs> busy family with three kids. They're not going to spend the time worrying about whether or not one arm of this huge conglomeration is releasing a movie. But you have to understand, though, what they've done um, what they've done within the past, and they've taken great care in doing this within the past decade, is... They've had an outlet to market outside of uh, theaters. So, like, you will not be seeing any Jojo Rabbit 
uh, attractions <laughs> or trailers at Disneyland. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. They know be a how great to, ride, it, like, but no. Well, uh, but what I'm saying is, like, for, for the Lion King, Hitler. like, at the, uh, <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is, so for, like, like Lion King, right? They would yeah. use the Michael Jackson Theater. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. And they would use that to show behind the scenes or something for the Lion King and promote it. You won't. They can't. They won't be able to do that. They won't do that for Jojo Rabbit. Like it sort of kind of makes their head spin. They're, they're almost like they're 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 like the um, uh, uh, robot from 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 Lost in Space. It's like warning, warning. <laughs> you know, and and smoke starts coming out of. They don't know anymore because they haven't dealt with these kind of films in such a long time, and they are so passionate and protective of their brand. Like. I would be very surprised if you see Jojo Rabbit being discussed at D23. Right. Even though it's, it's their not movie. going to. Right. No. Not going to. So when they can't do that sort of stuff, mm-hmm. they, they really, like, their heads kind of, like, explode. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I wanted to mention this comment that Zeno Hour said uh, Fox's new direction should be smaller, mid budget genre movies with one or two Oscar candidates per year. And I, I do I do agree with him. Yeah, I, they, agree. I think it should be one or two mid-budget movies and then one or two Oscar movies. Because another thing, as someone who knows the uh, award you know circuit and knows all about that, is that there are far too many movies that are made way too specifically for award season mm-hmm. that do not connect with enough audiences and therefore do not make enough money. Right. So even though you get the prestige of saying, like, nominated for two Academy Awards, you don't get the money back, mm-hmm. and they wind up like, Roma is a very good example where you just keep pouring money into something just because you want to say, like, I have this, but you don't make money off that movie. And that's, I mean, Beale Street's another good example. Moonlight example. Mm-hmm. is another good example. Mm-hmm. There's, they have these, 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 these levels of awards, but they don't actually have the money. Right. But that's what Fox Searchlight was all about, right? Anyways, right. in releasing these smaller movies to to add and pull in for. 20th Century Fox, you had like Fox Searchlight. Warner Brothers used to have a specialty label. Universal still has it. It's Focus Features, mm-hmm. right? Sony has Sony Classics, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, no offense to Sony. Their bastard steps yeah. out they, they throw um, it aside. <laughs> I, I liked it when they would set up separate distribution divisions, and I, I enjoyed that because that allowed that distribution team to re to, to, to release a movie, uh, a smaller movie, because they would give it the TLC. Like Warner Brothers is releasing Blinded by the Light, that's not in their wheelhouse to release, unfortunately. They don't know how to release a mid-movie like that. Um, whereas Whip would have. They would have done that correctly. Um, Fox Searchlight, obviously knows how to release and give the TLC needed to make a movie, get that word of mouth out, build, 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 build. Then you get your awards and you even get some box office. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I I mean, just before we move off this topic, I just want to say that, um, you know, I don't think Ad Astra or Ford versus Ferrari is going to do very well. I'm already calling that right now. As we sit here, as we're about to enter into the festival season and those movies premiere there, I just don't think there's a there's enough hype around them. I don't think there's enough buzz around them, and I don't think, as Jeff pointed out in the booth, Middle America cares enough about those movies because we always forget because we live in a major area that New York and L.A. are much different than everywhere else in the country. Yeah. We live and breathe this shit every mm-hmm. day, and that's all we talk about. Yeah. People in middle America, they much rather go to a basketball game or a football game or a baseball game and go catch the the three movies they see a year, which is usually a Marvel movie or a DC movie, let's be right. honest. Yeah. And then Star Wars. And Star Wars. So, yeah, yeah and Scott Boswell, to answer your question, yes, that Michael Jackson Theater is still open. Mm-hmm. Disney uses it, at least here in, in, um, in California, 
they used it to promote their yeah. their movies. Yeah. They had a big thing with Lion King. They did it for Aladdin. So, yeah, that's still open. But uh, and then Zeno Hour, Disney cares about money and prestige. Money, yes. Prestige. Yeah. They stopped caring <laughs> about prestige a little while ago. That's why. Mm -hmm. It, during that acquisition, they kind of well, they 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 they're letting they kept on Fox Searchlight. But you are correct though. If Fox Searchlight can provide some money and prestige, Disney will be like, ooh, but we're it, back yeah, in that game exactly. again. Uh, we, we really Sorry, do need to, know, no, yeah, no, 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 no. But I do have to bring up something because you pointed out something very interesting. So I almost wonder if Bohemian Rhapsody and Greatest Showman, two movies that I really, really love, mm -hmm. were, re were released now with Disney handling the Fox titles if they would have done as well. Because I'm wondering how much of these movies are essentially yeah. products, problems because of Disney getting their hands involved and actually not knowing what to do with them. I don't think they would have done as well. Because I think Disney has too much control over everything and they put their hands too much into it, their products that it just kind of it muddies it up. And maybe Greatest Showman falls a little bit more under Disney-esque. Mm -hmm. You can... Not Bohemian Rhapsody. Mm -hmm. At all. Mm -hmm. You know, no. It wouldn't have... No, they wouldn't have done as well. And again, that's what saddens me because had the Disney acquisition taken place before those movies had come out, we wouldn't be seeing those movies. We're losing we're losing a hell of a lot more oh, yeah. than we're yeah. gaining as audience. As audience. And I think that the people watching, listening now, you, you should take that into stock because as 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 Jenna as Jenna James pointed out, there's a lot of movies that that Disney just like they just mm -hmm. took it off. Done. Yeah. You're done. Whatever deals are in place, they said, you're, nope, you're done. So there are a lot yeah. of movies that are floating out there that I hope can land in another studio and make that studio rich. To say, <laughs> yeah, to kind yeah. of like rub it in their face. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. Happens um, all the time. It does. You pass does. on something, it goes somewhere else, and then they go, well, what happened? How, did, how, come, how come we didn't say yes to that? Well, it was you. <laughs> oh, it was. You know, yeah. Me and Uncle Bob. You know, yeah. yes. So, um, shifting now over to uh, this weekend, there is a lot of movies opening this weekend. A ton. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think many will be doing all that well or be seeing the light of day <laughs> in some ways. Um, you know, there we, as always, um, to pick up from Simon, uh, I printed out the box office mojo report, and it looks like Hobbs and Shaw is slated once again to be number one at the box office which i mean i enjoyed that film but i would really like to see one of the newer releases get that top spot mm -hmm. um so let's talk briefly about some of the newer releases um the one that they are saying is going to take the number two spot this week uh, is going to be Good Boys. Um, Dimitri, I know you did not see I this. Not. Uh, Michael, what did you think? I thought it was just a rehash of Super Bad with little kids. I didn't. I, I thought it was funny at moments. It had some good beats to it, but I've seen it before. Yeah, that's the thing. I've seen it so many times before. I, um, you know, I saw this movie at South by something happened to me at South by for this movie that I have never had happen in terms of a junket, uh, which still to this day pisses me off to no end. <laughs> um, but Good Boys to me is exactly like you said. It, it, it's basically. Super, uh, super bad light where they, they, they go go after a younger demographic mm -hmm. uh, in terms of not only like the audience that they're shooting to target this movie for, mm -hmm. but also for the people who are in the movie with Jacob mm -hmm. Tremblay and whatnot. Um, I just thought this was just infantile humor, just the same shit that we have seen Seth Rogen do time and time again, and it's just tiresome. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that a lot of people have enjoyed this movie. Um, I just wish we can do better when it comes to comedy. I, I yeah. used to love going to comedy movies, and when I see movies like this where they just lower the bar and they keep lowering the bar, that's just what, what upsets me about it. Yeah. Um, so I would tell you to pass on this. Mm -hmm. um, did anyone see Angry Birds 2? 
No. No, mm-hmm. I did not either. Mm-hmm. Um, I was not invited to any of the early press screenings or any any of that stuff. I don't. I'm guessing neither, none of you neither. were, were mm-hmm. either. Mm-hmm. So they invited me to one screening, and I did not want to get up at ten o'clock in the morning to see it. So good for that, <laughs> I will not see it. Uh, mm-hmm. Forty-seven meters down, uncaged. Dimitri, yes. take the lead with this. Yeah, I saw this last night with an audience at the AMC Century City. Surprisingly, a nice full house. Um, Look, this movie, uh, I tweeted this out yesterday. It's like that great beach read, right? So it entertains, it's thrilling, it grabs you. uh, And then, you know, and it's all in the comfort and the safety of your chair, and you don't have to even go in the water. I thought it was far better, uh, much like the first movie, it was was better than it deserved to be. And this movie, too, I thought that the the visuals were, were really good. Uh, throughout the whole movie, I'm thinking, how did they film this? I was really curious because much of it really did look underwater. I was buying this whole underwater city that they're swimming around in. Uh, look, it's only by name that it's 47 meters down. I get it, but it's not like the first movie. Again, we have a different cast going on here. I hope the movie does really well for entertainment studios. Again, another one of those studios that needs product and a hit and I think you'll go you'll have a good time you'll be on the edge of your seat uh the guy in front of me when the movie was over he got up he goes oh my god he went to he apologized to me he goes I'm so sorry I'm, I was jumping out of my seat I must have been blocking your view I was like I started to laugh I said it's okay that's why it's stadium seating buddy but it was all right but the audience seemed to really get into it and have a good time yeah it's I, fun. I, I mean I think this sequel does everything that a sequel should even though it does not connect to the first movie outside of the fact that it's about two sisters and it's about sharks that's the only two things that the movie has in common that being said it ups the ante in every way i mean they're the ending of this movie man i just they just go for it i mean they they push it which by the way, I don't. I guess I can say this now because the movie's out. Byron Allen actually told me at the junket that they actually had a different ending that will never see the light of day that wasn't big enough, and he made them go back and reshoot the ending because he wanted to have a big payoff. The last half hour of that movie, it, what it know, what this movie knows how to do, and the director whose name I can't pronounce, but <laughs> I don't know um, me either. I won't he, even try because you see how I butcher everyone's yeah, name. <laughs> but what he is very adept. Adapted, adapted doing is ratcheting up the conflict. So it's like, okay, we get through this, and then we have to go from here to here. How do we get there? And just when you think they're going to do it, something happens that they have to they have to amend their plans to get around. And he ratchets, 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 ratchets. So that last half hour, you're like, oh my god, <laughs> it's like, wow, well, yeah, it's it's a B movie for sure, but just a lot of fun. Yeah, mm-hmm. and. To its credit, 90 minutes. <laughs> 90 minutes. I, I, It wins on brevity. Yeah. So I want to spend the last two minutes of this show yeah. dedicating to a movie that is not even slated to open in the top 10, which, of course, is Blinded by the Light, which I think is a fantastic little film. All of us have seen it. Yeah. So we're going to start with Michael, since he's been so quiet these last 10 minutes. Tell us what you feel about Blinded by the Light. Blinded by the Light, I literally put it in my top five for this year. Really? It's so heartfelt. It pulls you in. I love the way they put Bruce's music into this film. It fits better than yesterday, and it fits better than any type of film that I've seen in some time. Because the way they, it's not about his music, it's about the character, and the music supports the character to push the story along. I think. It's 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 just I don't it's it's one of those films where I was just sitting at the whole time and I was just like wow this is something special I'm watching something special right now I felt the same way I started at CinemaCon mm-hmm. and um, yeah I walked out and I was like I, God I feel good mm-hmm. I, it was a really good feel good movie whatever m- my criticisms of the movie are very minor but I loved how uh, the director. Uh, Don't even ask me to pronounce her name. She did bend it by Beckham. Mm -hmm. Uh, The way she blended the music, she made it somewhat whimsical and musical, but at the same time very grounded. Mm -hmm. And I felt that the use of the Bruce Springsteen music, the way that it was done was far better than, say, Yesterday even handled the Beatles. And this is a far better movie than Yesterday. And the one question I always get asked about Blinded by the Light is, well, are... 
I'm either asked or I'm told I'm not a big Bruce Springsteen fan. And I say, you don't have to be. Mm -hmm. I go, in fact, you may go into the movie and come out of the movie and you might go, you might like stream them on the way home. Yeah. Yeah. No, I completely agree. And I think what, what's fascinating about this, and the, and the writer, I talked to the writer earlier in this uh, earlier this month, was that you know his story in a lot of ways is very universal, and I think a lot of people are going to connect with this. Again, does not have to be about the music of Bruce Springsteen. I was talking to Nestor and Yalta yesterday, and Yalta was saying to me, "I didn't have this connection with Bruce Springsteen, but I had it with another band." Mm -hmm. And that I see myself in the character. And I think what's so incredible about this movie is that it's, it is a love letter to Bruce Springsteen, but it's more or less to the lyrics and the way that she shows them on the screen yes. of how important those particular lyrics are to what's going on in this kid's life. Yes, I was going to say juxtaposed to the character himself and what he's going through. It, it, it really is a, a fantastic coming-of-age story right. uh, that works as a music level from a character level and a relationship level. Yeah. I agree. So uh, go see this movie if you can find it in theaters. Please, this is the movie you should should be supporting this week. I also just because we can't talk about it, but I would I would give a shout out to where where'd you go, Bernadette? Too. Gonna talk about it on Anatomy of a Movie yeah. later. So, okay. so so tune into that. Um, but uh, all right, we have to wrap up. Sorry, we love doing this show. We always have fun. Uh, Michael, where can we find you? You can find me at MuseTV.net and at MuseTV on YouTube. And at Dimitri Panos on the Twitters and on Anatomy of a Movie. Sounds good. I will also be on one episode of Anatomy of a Movie. I don't know which one yet, but I'm going to decide right after this show. Uh, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at the other Scott M. And also, We Live Entertainment. Please read my stuff this week. I normally don't ask, but please read it because I put a lot of hard work into stuff. it. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit PopcornTalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only. and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.